Hello YouTube and welcome to my latest video on using Eclipse. Today we're going to talk about how to use the Java debugger in Eclipse to solve your Java problems. And uh, first, just to set the scope of our conversation a little bit, I'm not going to be talking too much about the theory of debugging and how you kind of go about determining what part of your program is causing a problem. Uh, I recommend you read this article, How to Debug Small Programs by Eric Lippert. It was uh, it's kind of a compilation of some stack exchange tips that were posted and it's really a good way to uh, kind of understand the thinking that goes into solving bugs and problems. In my video here I'm mostly just going to talk about using the debugger tool but of course there's a whole bunch of uh, theory and a lot of ideas about how to best find bugs. Maybe I'll make a video for that later in the future but today we're just going to talk about using the tools themselves. So I want to start with basic debugging commands in Eclipse. So let's just bring up Eclipse instead of talking about it. Now here I have a just a simple program really that I wrote and all it does is creates an array of products which is a class I created and then I have another class I created that just totals up the price of the products and then prints it out. Okay so the products cost $4.99, $3.50, $24.99. So I run the program and I see the total is $24.99. So right, right away I see that's probably a bug because obviously if I add up all these values it's not right. So, so how would I go about solving this problem? Well what I'd probably do to start is look at where total price is being assigned and assign a breakpoint. So the way the debugger works is that we need to tell it where to stop to let us look at the code. So a breakpoint does that. And there are a whole bunch of different things we can do with breakpoints. We can make them conditional so that they only stop on certain things. We can toggle them on and off. For now, I'm just setting a basic breakpoint, which means it's going to hit that when our program runs. Now, if I click run, it just does the same exact thing. It doesn't, it runs right through it. What happened? Well, if you want the breakpoint to actually be recognized, you have to run in debug mode. So click uh, the debug button here. And then what's going to happen is Eclipse asks if you want to switch to the debug perspective. So you can click yes. And now we get a different window layout here. So there's a bunch of different things going on in this, in this layout. But first, let's just look down here. Look at the main, uh, the main class. And you can see this green line represents where the, where the program has stopped. So it's waiting for us to tell it to go through here and it hasn't executed this line yet and what we can do is we can look up here and we can see these are the values or the variables that are visible in our current scope okay so arguments that's from the main sales system uh, total price is the one that's interesting okay total price right now it's zero okay so the key things for debugging are how you step through the program so up here we have our, our options. Some are grayed out, but there are two that I want to look at right now. Step into and step over. So these are the key functions that really uh, you use to walk through your program. And they're similar, but there's one key difference. And that is step into will let me go into this function and the de debugger will follow the program's execution into the function and keep going. Step over it will execute this function, but the debugger won't follow it. It will just execute immediately, and the debugger will go to the next line. Okay, So I'm going to press step over, because I don't want to go into this get total function right now. And you might want to keep an eye on what happens to total price. So if I press step over, we executed this line. Total price is now $24.99, and I'm about to execute the print statement. And this is my output down here, by the way, my output window. Hasn't executed yet. If I click step over again, now the output has been uh, printed and I'm pretty much done so I can just click step over and once I do that the, the program executes and I lose my source code. So let's do that again and this time of course I think we want to do step into because that's probably where our pro problem is. Okay, So to run again, you can choose if you want to delete this to just start over. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. I'm going to run the debug again. We stopped in the same place, so now let's click step into. So now I go into my get total function. And you can see we have a new context over here. Our variables that we were access to before are gone. And now we're in our get total function. So we can see the products uh, list. And 
we don't see total yet because we haven't executed that. So I'm just going to do step over. Now look, total is available there. Okay. Step over again. I'm in a for loop. Now I is available. Okay. And I'm just going to keep going through. Watch what happened to total. Total got updated to 499. Keep an eye on total as I step over. Now total is 350. Now total is 24.99. So I think we've identified in our problem in our program that there's a problem with this line. And of course, you can see total is equaling the price. What it should be doing is it should be summing the prices. Okay. So that using the uh, the basic step functions, these are the ways we can kind of go through our program line by line and see what's happening. And if this is a bug, this could be one way I would find out discover that bug. Okay. So let's go back. Now, there's one other command that's interesting, and it was next to one of the ones I used. It's called drop to frame. Okay, so drop to frame is a useful way of going backwards in your program. But there's a special condition we'll talk about. But let's look at it. I'm just going to stop this. And by the way, this is the terminate button stops your current program. Resume, of course, just runs it normally. So let's start over again. Now, drop to frame button here is grayed out. But I'm going to step into my method here. I'm back here. Now, in order to understand what drop the frame does, it's, under, it's important to understand what a frame is. So look at this area here. And look what's happening here. This is our stack. Okay. So you can see the first thing executed is the main function. Then main called get total. Okay. So every time you call it, you step into another function, it's going to put another frame on your stack. All right. So watch what happens. If I step through a little bit, step over. Now I'm going to step into this method called get price. Okay, I step into it, and now look, I'm another level deep into my program. Now I'm on, I have in the get price method. So now I'm three levels in. Okay, main called get total, which called get price. Okay, and this could keep going on and on if I kept having functions that called functions that called functions. Watch what happens when I. Uh, step over and return out of it. It's gone now. Now we're back into our get total thing, get get total function, and uh, we're only two levels deep again. All right. So the key here, understanding what this button does, drop to frame, what drop to frame does is it resets the position in your, in your it goes back to the beginning of the frame you're currently in. Okay. So in order to make it look interesting, let's ex let's execute our program a couple more steps. Step over. Okay, so look at this. Total is 3.5, I is 2. I'm going to press drop to frame, and what's going to happen is it's just going to reset this. It's going to be like, it's going to be exactly like I started get total again. So get, drop to frame. I'm back here at the beginning of my method. You can see the total isn't defined yet. Uh, you know, all my eye is gone. It's like we've started over. Basically, we wiped the slate clean and went back to the the uh, beginning of our frame. Okay. So there's some situations where you can't use drop the frame. Uh, you can't use it in the main class because that's just like basically restarting a program. So if you really want to do that, you can um, you can just restart your program. But uh, drop the frame is definitely useful. For example, maybe if I put a breakpoint here. Okay, I'm going to stop. Let's get rid of this breakpoint. And what's going to happen, I'm going to run my program again. And let's go. So now maybe you're debugging and you realize, oh, I went too far. I want to start over. I don't want to, uh, I don't want my breakpoint to be here. I want to go back to the beginning of the frame. You can hit drop the frame and you can start over at the beginning of that method. Okay. So it's pretty useful if you've gone too far and you know you want to start over and get a fresh start again. So going backwards, use drop to frame. All right. And let's look at our next hint, our next and final uh, tip for using the debugger, changing variable values. So one interesting thing you can do in Eclipse here is if you're running a debugger, you can change the values of variables as it's running, and you can experiment with it a little bit and see how it how it uh, changes the the execution. Okay, so I'm gonna stop again, and 
not only can you change values, but you can also change code itself. All right. So let's go through here. And here you can see total equals products again. I'm going to run it. Step over. And now I'm on this line, return total. I'm actually going to change this a little bit. I'm going to make total 99.99F for float. And I hit enter, okay? So now total is $99.99. And you know, there was no way our program could have assigned that value. I manually assigned that value just now. And if I run it to the end, you see it prints out. Total is 99.99. .99, okay. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to tweak variables or modify it as it's running, it's possible to do that. You can also change code too, but there's a catch here. And let's run the debugger again. Okay. I'll step through a couple times just to make it interesting. So maybe let's say I'm working through it and this is the point where I realize I messed up. I don't want this to be equals. I want this to be plus equals. Okay. So I just put a plus there. So now I save it. And you notice here, you can change code, but what it seems to do is reset the frame. Okay. Which, you know, might be good, might be bad. But so understand that if you change code, it's going to reset the frame. My, my total is gone. And let's just run it to the end and see what happens. My program finished running and I see the total is 33.48, which based on my values here seems to be the correct output. Okay. So you saw we modified before we modified the value of a variable just to see what would happen and it, it works. It keeps going. And also we modified code itself and that, you know, makes it drop to frame again and restart that. All right. So those are just a couple ways to get started with the Eclipse debugger. I think if you've never used it before, those are some good ones to start with. I do recommend trying to use the debugger instead of using print statements and, um, you know, kind of manually making, printing out each variable name to see where it is. The debugger is a good habit to have. We looked at the step in, step over commands, dropping to frame, very useful for going backwards, and also changing the variable values. So that's a basic overview of the Eclipse debugger. Hopefully this was useful and I hope it saved you some time in your Java coding. Thanks for watching.